Hey guys, welcome back to Super Important Views. My name's Steve, and we're all gonna die. And sorry, I, just, I had to. It's, it's Rat Trap. And today we'll be going over the Transformers Generation Line Deluxe Class Rat Trap. This is a part of the Thrilling 30s. And for starters, Rat Trap is definitely my favorite character from the Beast Wars show. Overall, with his sarcastic nature and just the way he interacted with a lot of the other characters, with giving Dinobot and Cheeto a hard time because they're either quote-unquote rookie or just not overall trusting that character and also just the way he got along with Rhinox and with Optimus Primal not really get going along with his instructions all the time while well, also being fairly cowardly but also being very courageous at times as well he just really clicked with me as a character and especially with his alt mode just being a oversized rat for the most part and not really being as flashy as, say, like Optimus Prime's 8 mode or Cheetor's uh, Cheetah mode. It still was very surprising that he just came across as still a very cool character in that regards. And also a lot of my favorite episodes from that show are also generally our big story arcs for him. Just like a, a better mousetrap, which, spoilers, he has the grenades. But I just really love that episode personally. And so I'm very excited to get this guy out of the packaging. So... For that, for the packaging, again, he's a part of the Thrilling 30s, and overall, this comic book, it's not as the best start as I've seen on some of them, but I still really love the background for this, not less. Really makes it very desirable to actually keep him in the packaging. Also has his Maximal emblem up here, and also on the side here, shows that he's a Maximal as well. He's part of the Series 2. On the bottom, just shows some of the other figures in the line with Tankor and Crosscut. Nothing too much on the side here. And on the back, gives you a little bit of bio of them if you want to read it real quick. Alright, we good? Alright. Now the bottom gives them a little bit of his specs, which... Actually, it's a little bit of a bummer because none of these are really all that great. Like, the best thing is probably his skill being eight and his speed. But for his intelligence being low, like, he always came across as a fairly smart character in that show, at least compared to a lot of the other people. So, I'm actually kind of surprised that that's so low as it is. That just gives you another picture of his alt mode and for his rat. And that's pretty much it for the packaging. Let's get him open up out of his plastic prison. Alright, so for Rat Trap's accessories, he comes with two of these pistols. Which both look very nice. This one's slightly larger. And it has a decent amount of molded details here. It's also made out of this clear plastic, which I'm not quite as big of a fan of, but it's still not bad nonetheless. And then he's got the smaller pistol here, which also looks nice as well. Also, what I actually like about this one, it has kind of like the rails up here for the sights, so that's actually pretty cool. And then what you can do is you can actually combine these, which up here you see there's a little hole here to slot the handle in here. And you just push down on them, and then it makes one larger gun, which actually this looks very nice, and it looks like something that's actually supposed to be the way it is, like this is just one weapon. And I, sometimes you get with these figures where like they have the combining weapons, but they don't literally look right or just kind of tossed together. But this actually looks like it's something that's supposed to happen. My only one complaint with, it's more just a little bit of a mold problem for him, is that on mine, it's a little bit tough to get the pistols or in the actual hands. Especially, show it a little better, because the handle for this one's a little larger. It doesn't just slide in there, like you have to expand the plastic a little bit just to get it to fit there we go like it stays in there very securely which is kind of nice but i worry a little bit that his hands expanding there a little bit so that's a little bit of a bummer but still cool accessories nonetheless and also he has one here in his uh wrist here where he has a compartment where you can lift it up and it has his demo charges which i know initially when i seen these i thought they were binoculars or something where he's using the spy on the predacons but it's actually from an episode called A Better Mousetrap, where he has to use his demolition skills to take out the maximal security defenses on their ship. Because they actually can't get back into the spaceship because of them. So, it's actually a pretty nice homage to the series. And I really do like that. That's actually a really awesome touch. And then getting in the rat trap a little bit here. Overall, with the mold, I actually am so far been in love with this thing. One of my only little complaints here is for his head, you can see that he has a lot of light piping going on in the back here, which I think is really cool, and it has this overall like little globe effect that he had from the TV show. 
But what they did is you can see here on his eyes to make it a little more show accurate, they painted over the light piping with uh, some red paint. And it looks kind of nice, but with the light piping here, I got the light down that I got using as far as I can go. And overall with the eyes, with the painting here, it actually doesn't show the light piping off very well. So it seems like, to me, it's just a little bit of a waste up here to have all this while trying to cover it up there too. It's just, it probably would have been a little nicer if they just actually just left that effect out for this figure. But it, it's a nice try anyways. And overall with the mold on his head, I think it turned out very nice. And just got a lot of details in up here. Especially with the rat head on his chest. I think that actually looks really nice. And overall, I'm just really impressed with the overall paint on this figure. Like you can see here, he's got little his little maximal symbols on his arms. There's one over here too. And then with those legs and everything, like even the feet, like I really like how it's more ape-like on the front and stuff. Well, it still has like the rat feet on the bottoms, like that's pretty neat. The only real thing I don't like about the mold as much is he has a little bit of a backpack here. So he's a little bit top heavy and aims a little bit towards the back for the weight. But still, I haven't really had a problem with standing. Like you see here, he's really easy to stand up and he also poses still pretty well. So that's actually really nice. So even with the added weight back here, it still holds his pose very well. And it's a little bit gappy and stuff. Like I wish it would be a little bit more flush, but it's not really, it's not all that bad personally. And he very much looks like how he did in the original TV show. And for that, I really love this figure in robot form. And then for his articulation, his head is on a swivel. So they can go pretty much all the way around. His shoulders here are on a little ball joint so they can move up and down, back and forth, all the way around. It's also here, it's got a little peg joint here. So it also bends up here as well. So that's kind of a little bit weird. I'm smacking my camera there. Or it has the joint here and also here, like that throws me off a little bit. I'm assuming that's for the transformation. And then he's got a ratchet joint here, which can go up and down. Also has a rotation here. Nothing at the hands, even though it kind of looks like it does, but there's just nothing going on really there. And that's like here on ball joint, so forward to the side, forward, back. Plastic gets in the leg a little bit, but you can kind of work it all the way around. And here at the knees, a little bit. About a 90 degree angle all going towards the back. Also, go towards the front 90 degree angle, so you got that option as well. And then that's pretty much it at the feet here, and then I guess you could say the tail's also got an articulation a bit. But it's kind of weird because it's on this little wire. This is a more like just rubber plastic, and then it just has the wire sticking in there. So I'd get a little bit more into it with the rat mode, but I just would be a little bit worried on playing with this because. From prior experience, the wires tend to pop out in these eventually, and they're just not really meant to last forever. So that's a little bit of a bummer. I like, really kind of wish this was just more solid plastic and just been like one piece of hand off. But he actually has a decent amount of posability in this form too, so you can get a wide range of motion. And for that, I actually am just super in love with this form, even with the awkward light piping and whatnot. Like I still think he looks really awesome. Now I can't actually wait to get him in the beast form and see just how awesome he turned out. So for some quick comparison, here's Rat Track compared with some other of the Generation Lines weapon combining figures with Skids and Ed 209 version world. And here's Rat Track compared next to some original Beast Wars figures with Dinobot and Megatron. Yes. And finally, here's Rat Track compared next to some of the newer Generations Beast Wars figures with Waspinator and Rhinox. And here he is in beast form, which I personally think turned out really awesome. Because overall, with the amount of molded details on here, I th really, it is very reminiscent of the way Ratchet looked in the TV show. I really love like how you can, can kind of get him talking, where he's going to be like, talk a schmack. The only real noticeably ugly thing on here on this entire figure is that he has a little bit of his robot package still showing in under here. Especially if you look underneath, you can see his head just kind of sticking out here. Just a little bit of an eyesore. And then, same with his arms kind of hanging out front here. But, oh, for a Beast Wars figure, I still think it looks really nice. And I really love the weapon stores down here. It just kind of hides in here on his belly. And it's 
This is a very nice way of doing that. I'm really glad that Hasbro's been doing a decent amount of web hiding with these figures with the Generations line. Because a lot of it fits in, especially if Rhinox were hit underneath as well. And that was just a really awesome touch. And overall, there's not really a whole lot to go over because it's pretty much... It's a rat, so it's like, eh, it looks like a rat. It's got some extra brown paint back here. And the only other kind of real thing is I maybe would have wished that they would have covered up these little port slots here. Because that looks a little bit ugly. But still, I'm mainly going to be having this guy sitting on my shelf in robot form anyways, because that's just the way I remember from the TV show. But this is still actually a really nice looking form. I, just, I like the gloss black on the nose here and everything. And even the teeth have a little bit of painting on them and stuff too, so that's really nice. Let's get with the gloss black on the eyes. A little bit of detail in his ears here. So that's pretty cool. He's even, he's even got like his little ear hole here. And then for his articulation, I guess you could claim that he has a swivel at the head, if you really want to, where you got him looking down. He has, his mouth can move up and down. And fully closes. His front paws can go all the way back. Oh, no. <laughs> Here's me complaining about this, but... Alright, so... That wasn't in there very well. Alright. We're good. We're good. Oh, that's kind of a bummer. That actually doesn't really stand there all that well. As you see, it's kind of a little bit scraped plastic in there, so it's a... Uh, isn't that really a good way for it to latch in here? Does this arm do it too? Yeah, that arm pops off pretty well as well. Alright, so... That's a little bit of a bummer now that I've noticed that. So, but it can go forward, back, only about that far, unless you want to pop it out a little bit. So you can get the go farther back if you really want it. Man, that sucks. And for his little rat hands here, they're on a bit of a swivel, so they can go all the way, all the way around. Do it. Same with this one. So they get a little bit of play with him, so he's like looking up and like, high fives are about to bitch smack somebody. And then for the back legs, not really a whole lot of posability here, except you got a bend here at the feet. Like if you want to pop it out of the transformation, you can have him like stand it up a little bit. So that's kind of cool. If I could get him to do it anyways. There we go. So that's pretty neat, because then you can get him standing with some of the other, di like Dinobot or Rhinox, and it'll look like he's like, don't back talk me. So that's pretty nice. And then put this tail here, go up and down because it's on a little swivel joint. Also, you can pretty much bend this any which way you want because it's just again the rubber plastic of the wire here. I'd just be a little wary on this because over time I could imagine the rubber wearing out a bit and then just the wire popping out or whatnot. So just be a little cautious of that. So overall, I still don't think even with the the joints popping out very easy with his arms here. I still don't think it's bad. Like it's a nice looking robot form, especially for it being a Beast Wars figure. And it just it looks like a rat. It's pretty much all I really want it to be. And here's Raptor compared next to Skids and Carmo and a whirl and uh give me a sec. Alright, so here they are all in their alt modes. And here's compared next to the classics Dinobot and Megatron. And here's Raptor compared next to the new generations Rhinox and Waspinator. So overall, for Rat Trap, I'm very happy with the way this figure turned out. His amount of detail and accessories are amazing. And even with the unnecessary light piping because they painted over the eyes and with the limbs sometimes popping off on me, I still think he's very well worth it. Especially if you're a big fan of the Beast Wars series. Because with this whole Generations line, all the Beast Wars figures have been really awesome and show accurate. And he is just no less different than all of them. So, I'm very glad I got this guy to add to my collection. So, what do you guys think? Do you guys like the mouse with the mouth? Do you guys enjoy Beast Wars? Or you guys just think the talking animals should be left to Disney? Please let me know in the comments. If you guys want to see closer pictures of them, I'm on Facebook. If you want to click the link in the description below. Please don't be afraid to share this video around. And if you like this and want to see more stuff like this, please give us a like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching.